Hey guys, Tyler here. Super Mario is one of the most recognizable video game brands of all time, and he's been featured in over 200 games and loads of other media. The main setting of his stories, the Mushroom Kingdom, is also recognizable for its distinct environments and aesthetic, stretching all the way back to the early 80s. And with each successive Mario title, we get a wider view of the world our hero inhabits, as the stakes between him and Bowser get higher and higher. But for a long time, one question has continued to elude many players, from casual fans to even hardcore gamers alike. Does Super Mario take place on some alternate Earth, or is the Mushroom Kingdom on another planet entirely? The reason I think this is worth investigating is because Mario's world tends to blend elements from our Earth with those of a clearly fictional, fantastical one. For example, Mario, Luigi, Peach, Daisy, Rosalina, and several other characters are distinctly human, but alongside these and other familiar flora and fauna exist fictional and often cartoonish forms of life. Additionally, the world mixes familiar technologies from 21st century human civilization with devices that often exhibit magical and physics-bending properties. And this is not to mention a wild variety of architectures including European-style castles, Japanese architecture, metropolitan skyscrapers, and more. In order to get to the bottom of this, I've put together a group of fellow YouTubers to examine various aspects of Mario's universe and answer the question, does Super Mario take place on Earth? Today I'm joined by Phobia, Kinsey K Productions, and The Mind of Lewis, and the four of us will each tackle a different piece of the puzzle and explore different hypotheses as to the true nature of Super Mario World. Super Mario's World, not, not the game, y you know what I'm trying to say. So let's get into it then. As much as Sonic is known for running fast, Mario is known for jumping high. In fact, Super Mario Bros. for the NES is almost solely responsible for popularizing the platformer as a specific and individual game genre. It's no surprise that Nintendo has doubled down on jumping mechanics in Mario games over the years without straying too far away from the basic formula. But here's the thing. Going up is only half the conversation. If you make a game with jumping as the primary mechanic, what you've really done is made a game about manipulating your gravity. Now we all know that Miyamoto didn't pull out some stack of Newtonian equations to make Mario's gravity scale perfectly to what we experience on Earth. Why would he? But it does raise the question, just how different is it? If you jump off of some tall point in a Mario game, it feels like it takes forever to hit the ground. And that makes sense, right? If Mario wasn't at least a little bit floaty, the player would have very little time to adjust their direction while midair. So to compensate, they would probably spend more time on the ground where they feel like they have more control, and then you'd have a game about mostly just walking around. Like Breath of the Wild. So that would mean that theoretically speaking, if Mario experiences less gravity than we do on Earth, then his planet should either be smaller than Earth or made up of a less dense material, right? Cool. Except that the gravity Mario experiences at any given time is completely dependent on where he is, what sort of objects he's last interacted with, and especially, what game he's in. Super Mario Galaxy is the obvious example here, with somehow all of the microplanets of various sizes in that game displaying identical gravities when Mario lands on each of them. Point being, gravity is not a consistent force within the Mario universe, and cannot be used to calculate how the fictional worlds from various Mario games relate to our reality. Shocker, I know. If you want to talk about the laws of physics of a Mario game, you have to keep your analysis isolated to a single game, or better yet, a specific stage of a game, or you're going to get conflicting results. So with that in mind, I'll give you the best figure I can come up with, which is using Metro Kingdom from Super Mario Odyssey as our baseline. Metro is unique from every other stage in every other Mario game, in that there are NPCs that are very obviously humans, which finally give us a reference point to our understanding of gravity. The average height of an adult man is 5.7 feet, or 174 centimeters, and the average height of an adult woman is 5.2 feet, or 158 centimeters. Mario is about 60% of the height of these NPCs, so taking the average of these two figures, that gives him a height of 3.3 feet, or 1 meter flat. <clears throat> Small boy. So if we assume that Mario is exactly 1 meter tall, we find that in Super Mario Odyssey, he can jump to a height of about 3 meters with a single long A press, and returns to the ground in 0.3 seconds. The rate of our gravity on Earth is 9.8 meters per second per second, 
So if we take 30% of that number to see how far Mario should fall in 0.3 seconds, we get a figure of 2.94 meters, almost exactly his 3 meter jump height. That means that the gravity Mario experiences in Super Mario Odyssey is almost identical to ours on Earth. Hold on a minute. Didn't you just say that Mario's gravity must be weaker than Earth's since it takes him so long to hit the ground after jumping off something tall? Which is it? More or less? That's what makes this such an interesting topic. My research shows that Mario's gravity is shockingly close to our own if you ignore gravitational acceleration. The way gravity works in real life is that any object on Earth will fall at 9.8 meters per second and then increase in speed by 9.8 meters per second more until colliding with an object or reaching terminal velocity. This is not true for Mario in any game. Mario always falls at a flat, unchanging rate, which is why he feels so slow and floaty when you jump off of something tall. Our experience in real life is telling us that he should be speeding up as he falls, but he just doesn't, so it looks slow. Our gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared, but Mario's appears to be just 9.8 meters per second. So by those figures, it's possible that Mario's planet is very similar in size and density to our own, leading credence to the theory that the Mushroom Kingdom exists within some altered Earth. But it's also in some weird universe where gravitational acceleration isn't a thing. So, uh, do with that what you will. But hey, at least now we know why Mario can fall several hundred feet without his spine shattering. Thanks, Phobia. So basically, what all of this means is that in the Mario universe, objects experience a constant downward speed due to gravity as opposed to a constant acceleration, assuming the latter is the mistake that many prior wannabe mathematicians have made. They incorrectly calculated based on the timing of Mario's jump height that his planet's gravitational pull must be upwards of 70 meters per second squared, or 7 times Earth's gravity. Couple that with trig calculations based on the position of the Sun in Odyssey, and some arrive at a radius for Mario's planet of one-fifth that of Earth. The problem with this is that it assumes the Sun is the same size and distance away from the planet as our Sun, which is not guaranteed. And in any case, assuming a smaller radius and or higher gravity would mean the planet has a density several times that of Earth rock, which is absurd even for this franchise, as those numbers would suggest the density of a neutron star, and not that of a rocky planet. Speaking of rocky planets, what's the deal with those differently shaped continents on the Odyssey globe? Hi everyone, this is Kenzie. In previous decades, there was more of a consensus among fans, some developers, and the creators of the Super Mario Bros. cartoon that Mario and Luigi were from a world not unlike our own, and that the Mushroom Kingdom existed either inside a hollow earth or was itself a parallel universe. Proponents of this theory argued that, because Mario creator Shigeru Miyamoto had given Mario and Luigi an Italian identity, and supplementary media established their original home in Brooklyn, this gave credence to the idea of a separate, real world, distinct from the main setting of the games. This idea is taken to the extreme in the 1993 Super Mario Bros. movie, which is of course not canon in any way, shape, or form. But in any case, more recently, this separation between the real world and Mushroom Kingdom has disappeared. Except for the aforementioned crossover games, continuous casual retcons over the years have silently swept under the rug any connections between the Mario world and our Earth. While other early games such as Mario's Time Machine played into this separation, mentioning Brooklyn and other aspects of early history and geography, the mainline Mario platformer series have never explicitly mentioned Brooklyn or given this distinction the light of day. In fact, Odyssey establishes an entirely new surface topography of Mario's world and arguably retcons Mario and Luigi's former residence to New Donk City, where Mayor Pauline directly references the events of Donkey Kong. Also, while the Mario Kart games have previously featured Earth in the background of certain stages like Rainbow Road, the road that you go when you die, new entries in that series instead use the Odyssey Globe. The most accurate, up-to-date information on the planet's size and surface comes from Odyssey. We are gifted with an entire world map and relatively detailed topography that defines each region visited in the game. For those of you that have played Odyssey, you know that that globe has a lot of girth. The Odyssey globe features a continent layout that is substantially different from Earth. Although it shares certain biomes and a natural satellite very similar to our moon, 
In previous titles, when we got a glimpse of the entire planet, it was either obscured heavily by cloud cover, such as in the Galaxy titles, or, as mentioned earlier, resembled Earth, such as in Mario Kart. Clearly, it's safe to say that given its use in the most recent Mario titles, this new map is what Mario's world is supposed to look like. Another interesting aspect of Mario's world is the continent layout itself. Given that many of the kingdoms in Odyssey are based on real-world locations, it's interesting to consider whether the continent layout resembles any of the various continent layouts in Earth's long geological history. While there isn't a single supercontinent configuration that matches exactly, especially since many of the land masses are stylistically designed to fit the theme of each kingdom, there is one other possibility. Many of Earth's land masses exist on what are called cratons, or sections of tectonic plates that have drifted into various configurations over billions of years. There is a craton for just about every region of Earth, including the American Northeast, the Amazon, the Sahara, the Balkans, Northern Europe, India, etc. Though it's a stretch, it's possible that Mario's world might feature a configuration of cratons that's simply different from Earth's history, as while the continents don't match the constituent elements of Pangaea, the locations and cultures associated with them clearly evolved on this alternate world. We can see analogs to real-world locations as far back as Super Mario Land, although admittedly these locations are more culturally inspired than being exact geographic matches. Nevertheless, the Kraton hypothesis could be a further indication that Mario's world is intended not to just be a random planet in space, but a truly parallel version of Earth with a different geological and evolutionary history. Thanks again to Tyler for letting me on. If you're ever covering Hell Valley Sky Trees, I'll be the first one to talk in that one. Back to you, brother. Thanks, Kinsey. During the early development of this video, I'd like to think that I became something of a semi-expert on the history of plate tectonics. Uh, okay, that's, that's probably stretching it quite a bit, but I did learn a lot about Earth's geological history. Like Kinsey said, there isn't a single supercontinent in Earth's history that would have been liable to drift apart into the configuration we see on the Odyssey globe, but it's interesting to see a unique canon map created to supersede the glimpses we've gotten in previous installments. But besides the planet's geology, what about the life that flourishes on its surface? Hi guys, Mind of Lewis here. In addition to the astronomical and geological nature of Mario's planet, another aspect that illuminates the world's creativity is its flora and fauna. While we see a great variety of plant and animal species throughout all the games, Odyssey in particular does give us a fuller look of the planet's biodiversity. We certainly don't visit every biome on every continent, but the sampling we do get introduces over half a dozen new intelligent species. Between the people of each kingdom and the other intelligent species we've become familiar with in the previous titles, as well as the wildlife present throughout the franchise, evolution on Mario's planet is truly remarkable. Not only do we see familiar forms such as primates and other mammals, reptiles, fungi, insects, and cephalopods, and other vertebrates and invertebrates alike, but we meet a variety of artificial and mechanical life forms, such as steam gardeners of the Wooden Kingdom and the fork like Valbonans of the Luncheon Kingdom. The former are very clearly robots, the creator uncertain, but the latter could be described as tetrapodal silicon-based beings, with their outer prongs sometimes serving as arms as their inner prongs almost always on the ground. While examining wildlife in the Mario universe from strictly a scientific perspective may seem silly, given it's a video game, to be fair, other players and developers have also given some thought to the biological process such as reproduction. One life form where this is very evident is the piranha plant, a notorious enemy from the Mario franchise that has appeared in nearly every single Super Mario Bros game. The piranha plant resembles a Venus flytrap and can attack Mario by biting him. On occasion, piranha plants are depicted as having sentience and being capable of speech. However, unlike other Mario enemies, such as Goombas, are never shown forming societies. Piranha plants can be capable of walking as well, and given that they are sometimes shown hatching from eggs, some have speculated they may be oviparous, egg laying that is, a trait not found in real life plants. Relative of piranha plants, however, are shown evolving from spores, such as in Yoshi's Island. By the way, speaking of Goombas, what are they supposed to be? Well, according to Mario Wiki, Goombas are originally created with the appearance of a shiitake mushroom, meaning that they may be related to toads. 
It's honestly incredible that this level of biodiversity is present on such a compact world, especially given the variety of intelligent species. Normally, it would be highly unlikely for all these multiple species to coexist alongside each other for very long. Homo sapiens outcompeting our early hominoid cousins is a perfect example of this. However, it's clear that the nature of life on this world is fundamentally different from the one in the real world. And of course, life doesn't always end with death. Remember, Mario's world is full of ghosts. It's not surprising then that a simulated reality such as this one would offer up possibilities for biodiversity that are well beyond the boundaries of what we believe to be likely based on real world science. Thanks guys. Well, to answer the question, what is Mario's planet? The answer appears to be, it's Earth, but not as we know it. At least that's one interpretation. It's indisputable in my view that Mario's world exists in a universe with fundamentally different physics from our own. Whether it's intended to be an analog for Earth or simply another planet that happens to be populated by cultures with some Earth-like aesthetics, it's clear that Mario's planet has its own vibrant characteristics that continue to amaze players the world over. When the Mario characters cross over to our world in sporting games and such, well, that's a different story, one distinct from mapping the Mario planet's own geography. This video was largely inspired by my desire to map out locations in the Mario universe, a task that has been helped along by various Super Bell subway maps in Mario Kart 8, as well as pinpointing kingdoms in Odyssey. Such a monumental task would take much longer than the making of this video, but I thought it would be fun to discuss the possibilities surrounding the physical nature of Mario's planet. Thank you all so much for watching. I know that this is a different kind of video, but it's one that I've wanted to make for a while. I'm definitely interested to hear your thoughts in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a thumbs up down below and don't forget to share it. That stuff really helps me out. And of course, special thanks to Phobia, Kenzie K, and The Mind of Lewis for narrating portions of this video. Be sure to check out their channels and follow them on social media. Links in the description. As always, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button as well so you won't miss future uploads, and click the bell icon to receive all notifications. If you want to support my work even further, becoming a patron or a member is a great way to do so. Links to those, as well as my social media and merch store, are also in the description. That's all I have for this week. I'll see you in the next video.